Hi, man, Armstrong, and welcome to the back office teardown lab. If you have an Atari ST and you want to plug it into a mon modern monitor, you have an issue because it has this type of connector, which isn't quite as compatible, um, and it outputs a 15 kilohertz VGA signal and high, medium, and low mode. So there's a bit of complication here. So uh, I created this uh, device, which you can buy on my... Uh, Website. I say I created it. It's kind of based on an existing type of design that people have been doing for a while. So I've sort of adapted one and I've uh, made, uh, I didn't make, even make the case that was provided by Chrissy. Anywho, you plug that in there and you can just plug that into your modern monitor, which is pretty cool. And that's available on my website right now for purchase. Very reasonable. I think you'll find it cheaper than most of the competition. So I received a package in the post uh, recently and it had a really quite lovely letter on it um, by uh, Pierre Funk Funky Peewee, I think you pronounce it. How do you pronounce that? It's, it's like P-I-W-Y at P Funky P-I-W-Y on uh, Twitter. Go and have a look. And he said, uh, have a look at this. He's designed a 3D printed case for the video adapter. So he, he bought one of these uh, among some of the other bits and pieces. And he's made this... Uh, 3D uh, printed case and also that he's made a, a sound mod for it because of course I use it primarily on an Atari STF, uh, sorry STE, where you have the sound on RCA phono jacks. Whereas if you have an STF or a Mega, uh, you probably would want the sound out of this. And you can you can get it if you if you take the uh, case apart, uh, you can get gear it. I should have a show you why you can get it because. It's very easy to work with the attached DIN pins there. So you've got very attached DIN pins. So what Pierre's done, he's actually uh, done that. He's, he's made this, he's made a, a nice 3D printed case and he's actually got a really nice little instruction on how you do it. So I thought, we'll have a look at what he's done because he's clearly sent me some. Um, which <laughs> I like, I'm never gonna be, I'm never complaining about getting sent stuff, but this looks wonderful. He's actually, they look, are they painted or they're, they're definitely the right sort of colors. So these are all the pieces. Oh, is he actually even got the parts to make the mod? Okay, interesting. Well, why don't we do that? We'll make one for a, an STFM or a, a Mega. Now, ironically, I do have a Mega and I think I have an issue fitting it because it won't fit. So I use an external floppy drive. It's something like that. There's a gotcha with mine. So I'm just pulling out all these 3D printed pieces a bit gingerly. It's even got a little back office logo on it. This is a little back office logo piece. Look at that. I'm going to just zoom in on that because it's kind of a flesh colored look. It's, it's slightly flesh colored, but I think it, you can just about see that. It will focus on there. I think even the camera is having trouble focusing on that color. Maybe it's a, uh, Skin color dependent. So let's see what you do. So you get your uh, Where do you start? So you have to solder this bit onto there Okay, gonna get my soldering iron on while we're at it. I'm a bit more prepared now have the soldering iron on have the connector so Starting first things first. He's got the dimensions here nicely marked out. So this is five centimeters of black I think that's about five centimeters I've got a tinned end on this already, which is convenient. So he says solder that to this center tap here. Can do. In fact, what do we need to solder? I'm gonna just tin up all the connectors we need to solder. Those three. That's not too bad. Should we zoom in so you can have a look as well while I'm doing it? And the first one is the black onto the front pin. We can do that like that. I do like this. It's so inspirational when someone takes something that you've done and then makes something else with it. Um, I think the first experience, or one of the first experiences, is uh, Chrissy in the Discord uh, taking the diagnostic cart and making it into a game cartridge. I think he got Buggy Boy on that one. Which I, I, I've yet to do. I want to do it, but I can't understand how ROMs need to be split because they've got a really weird 
weird way of doing it. You've got to split the ROM, and I'm just not quite sure how you do that because I would quite like to split a ROM for a firmware because I've got a uh, Atari ST uh, Mega, a Mega ST, and it has a old old uh, operating system, an old copy of TOS. And I want to put a newer one, and it's a two chip. And I kind of think it's easier to put a six chip if I worked out because you can't really flash the two chip versions. So I'm going to decase one of these because we won't be one in the old case anymore. And I'll put, put that aside though. We'll do that for a future one. So I've decased it and it's saying I need to solder this onto some of the specific pins and that's fine too. It's going to be pin 13 and pin 1. Nice and easy. So I'm going to just check the lengths now. He did say four and a half centimeters. I'm going to get my DigiKey ruler out. Four and a half, I'm guessing from the joint, which would put us about here. And five centimeters on the other one, which would put us about here. Cut that. Oops. Just if you're doing this at home, I guess do this just follow along really, do the same stuff. Try not to leave it too short or too long, because at the end of the day you're gonna have to put it in the case. And you don't really oh no, that's mega short because I just snapped off the end of the wire. Right, let's see if we can still do this. Just gonna tin these, have a look. It's a bit more interesting, isn't it, having a uh, printed background for the soldering it uh, probably makes it a little bit more confusing to your eye doesn't it than a plain white background but I think you get the idea so we're just going to trim that off like that it's got two trimmed edges and the red wire is going to pin one on the connector which is that pin right there so I'm just going to do that right now and then the black wire is going to pin 13 which is slightly more tricky because it's just next to the D sub connector but it's not that tricky it's not that tricky if you've got a couple of pairs of hands <laughs> or you've just got mad skills like me mad skills look at that done so that's that part done. Where, let's follow the instructions again. Let's see what's next. We've done that bit. Two, place the support and fold the wires in on top of it. So is this the support? I think this is the support. So I think you place the support. Look, my wires might be a bit too thick for this, but let's go for it anyway. This is quite the design. You've gone through a lot of effort, sir, to, to make this can tell. Um, so I'm guessing that's the support. I don't know how hard you crunch that in. And then you fold this over it seems. Have I got that the right way? No. I've got it arse about, that's why. That's why it's not fitting. <laughs> that makes a lot more sense. Maybe my wires are too thick though. And then fold that over like so. Loosen the thread on that. There we go. Someone spent a lot of time with a bit of a CAD package to get this far, didn't they? Look at that. Right, two. Where's the three? <laughs> assemble the pieces. So that's it really, is it? We're just assembling the pieces. That's not a piece. Which goes where? So that. <laughs> Why am I having so much difficulty here? How do you switch the switch though? Or are you not using it? Ma, maybe you're not. Are you just using it? Oh, I think you might only be using it in one mode. Are you only using it in high res? Oh, that's the only reason I could think of that you wouldn't want to, to be able to switch that. Ah, okay, got you. I got you. I'm going to pull out this 
ring for now. I have to say, I'm not quite as uh, dexterous as I once was, clearly. I get you though, I get you. Um, yeah, I'm wondering how do you uh, uh, use the mode switch? Comment down below if you're watching and let me know if you're doing anything with the graphics mode or are you just locking it to a particular mode. Uh, I can't remember which, which one that is. It might be you're just using it only in the uh, low res or the high res and that's where your uh, 3D printed case has that. So you'd be very hard pressed to get in there. But I do like that you're using the Atari ST style grills and you've gone for the slightly yellowed case colour. Let's get that last piece in. There's a lot of holding things together. I'm holding it together. There we go. Right, so let's see how this bit slides in. It's a nice little door. Might need to... Oh, you got... That's quite good for a 3D printed piece though, isn't it? That is actually just worked and it aligns nicely. This is a good uh, good design. How did you design this, pray tell? What package are you using? I'm sure, like many others, we would love to know. Come on, it's getting over my thick piece of wire. And look, look at that. Wow. <laughs> okay, um, that's cool. Does that switch still work? Let me just check. It does, you know. Hmm. I don't know. Have you got this on Thingiverse? There might be a way of, of just working that switch a little bit more um, fluidly so that you could adapt modes. But maybe if you don't need to adapt modes that often, it doesn't matter. Cool. All right. So that's all the parts. Let's clear the desk. Let's see how that looks on the old Atari ST because it's quite quite the design. And you can see it matches up with that cheese gratery type design on the top. My ST is yellowed in a different way. Ooh, I do like that. Look at that. If that was, I see I've, I've got my ones printed in a, in a gray. If I had that printed in the gray, I reckon that would look spot on. And you've got the audio out there on the side. So if you've got the STFM there, you've got the little audio out plug and how he's hooked that up is that he's running it to, I think that's an HDMI adapter. So it's a VGA and audio going through and then that'll be an HDMI adapter. So he's getting his Atari ST going out of his adapter. But it does say there is a trick, a, a last second trick to this. I'm, I'm holding up to the light for a reason because he says it glows in the dark. Oh, I think, look at that. Wow, I'm not sure if the camera's picking that up, but that's, Quite the green glow. I do like that. How did you get the back of his skull, uh, skull and crossbones or SNES pad and screwdriver wrench separately to that? You must have printed that little part separately and stuck it onto the beige. That is something very impressive. So thank you so much for that. Let's, let's pop that back out and just eyeball it one last time. Um, but yeah, thank you very much for that 3D uh, printed case Pierre um, it's definitely to my taste you've written that in there it is to my taste and I'm really I'm really overjoyed that you've uh, taken the effort to do that and uh, obviously removed the element of cost engineering that I cost engineered into it by removing the audio <laughs> port <laughs> so yeah hopefully uh, you enjoy that and those of you at home, if you've enjoyed that, then great. Please like, share, subscribe. Uh, the Patreon wall is coming soon. Uh, but just before again, I'll just remind you, if you are looking for these, again, they're not in, in a less a less interesting case, uh, but uh, I think it's a, a very neat little case. Um, <laughs> please go onto my website, www.backofficeshow.com and uh, you can order yours. Uh, they're on there for sale right now. As ever, thanks for watching. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha.